Hello, everybody. Today is day 334, and we're continuing our reading through the book of Acts, chapter 15 and 16. The Holy Ghost-filled church is not without conflict and division and contentions and disagreements. Uh, there are rising issues with the law, especially as the Jews who've been trained and raised in the very legal aspects of their faith is uh, struggling because many of these new believers, especially the Gentiles, are not getting circumcised. And they are telling them, hey, listen, if you're not circumcised, you can't be saved. And so this huge contention had uh, to be addressed. And this is what we find in these opening uh, verses here in chapter 16. Peter speaks to the Jerusalem council. He's reporting all that God was doing amongst the Gentile people. The Gentiles are hearing and they are believing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is evident that, as he emphasizes, that grace and faith are the major contributing factors here in producing genuine converts. Now, this is going to be the contrast between the issues of the works of the law and the this uh, distinguishing high element of grace and faith. And you and I can also struggle with this feeling as though that we must do something in order to earn our salvation. But this is the most perfect example of uh, the simplicity of the gospel, is that it all begins with grace and faith. In fact, they are receiving, as uh, Peter acknowledges, listen, these Gentiles are receiving the same Holy Spirit just as we receive that Holy Spirit. So the same manifestations are taking place. Well, uh, then Paul and Barnabas chip in and they affirm how God was moving with many miracles and wonders in their midst. This is no small move of the Holy Spirit. Well, they use the scriptures also to show God's plan to visit the Gentiles, which again only reaffirms um, the fact that this was the plan of God from the beginning, and it uncovers and uh, discloses to them that uh, this is, in fact, the very uh, plan of the Lord, and it also affirms the, the sacred writings of the scriptures, God foretelling what was, a, what was going to happen in the future. So they established basic guiding principles for the Gentiles who were turning to God. They said, listen, first, stay away from things that are offered to idols. And then secondly, um, from blood, from drinking blood, or from animals that are strangled. And then they said, thirdly, stay away from sexual immorality. And they said, hey, listen, you do this and you will do well. And the church received the message with joy. I think that there's this awareness the apostles had this was a compromising aspect that in reality, when these people experience uh, by faith the work of Christ for the renewing of their heart, redemption and forgiveness of sin, that the very attitudes of the behavior would begin to change. Even as the Bible says that he would replace the heart of stone with the heart of flesh. He would write their laws upon their heart. And so it's not as if they're just saying, hey, you can go out there and do whatever you want to do except for these two or three things. They're simply giving them a starting point and knowing that the Holy Spirit was going to give them clarity of what it truly means to be a consecrated vessel surrendered through the Lord Jesus Christ. While even sharp contentions uh, between spirit-filled men rise up, as in uh, Paul uh, and Barnabas over John Mark. Now, these are spirit-filled uh, individuals who love God and have been used mightily by God, and yet they separated ways because the contentions were so intense over the issue of whether they should take John Mark or not. So they went their separate ways. What I want you to see is that obviously, again, because of human personalities, there's going to be differences, and there's going to be times of which uh, uh, individuals may have uh, differences of opinion. What happens here, though, is that they end up parting ways because of the contention, and yet, even though they went different directions, the Spirit of God was still working through both parties. God still worked in spite of their human imperfections, and that ought to be a great encouragement to all of us. Um, so, uh, Paul and Barnabas go preaching in uh, numerous places. People are 
are getting saved, as with the, the woman Lydia. It's interesting the difference between Paul who's knocked to the road and has this remarkable conversion experience. But here with Lydia, the Bible simply says she believed what was she heard them preaching. And again, our salvation is based upon simple belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. And demons are being driven out. Um, but this, of course, stirs up great opposition. So you and I must recognize that when we commit our lives to Jesus Christ, that there it can be, the, we can anticipate the expected trials, tribulations, and rejections. For Jesus warned us, they hated him, they will hate us. They wanted to kill him, they won't want to kill us. And it was all because of the gospel. It's because of Jesus Christ. Well, uh, these men, uh, Paul and Silas, are taken and they are beaten and they're whipped and they have many stripes and they're thrown into prison and they're secured to chains and socks. And so now think what you might feel. You're doing everything God's called you to do. You end up in the middle of a dirty, rotten, damp prison with a bunch of other criminals and uh, you would normally you'd be thinking you know why am I here since I've been obeying God but they didn't have that attitude and I think it says volumes to us and why we must take the high road and really firmly believe that God is in control of every situation of our lives so how did they respond to the opposition to the beatings to the to the whippings how did they respond to being locked in prison the Bible says but at midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns. That was probably the last thing that you would want or feel like doing, but it was the first thing that you and I must do when in the midst of opposition. God uses opposition to disclose the power of the gospel, and that's exactly what happened. As they are singing and praying, the Bible says the prisoners are listening, and then God sends a divine earthquake. It rattles that uh, prison and uh, all of the uh, doors fly open, the stocks fall off, um, but the prisoners don't leave. Why? Because what they have experienced, they have, ex they have an encounter with God. Even in that dirty, rotten prison, the atmosphere has been supercharged by the visitation of the Holy Spirit. The guard comes in, seeing this has happened, the doors are all open, he's ready to kill himself. Paul says, uh, hey, listen, don't uh, do it. We are all here. The fact that they could have escaped and didn't escape spoke volumes to this guard who recognized, listen, this is not normal. There's some other spirit here. Something's going on. And so he falls before them and says, listen, then what do I need to be saved? In other words, what do I need to do to have what you have? And, uh, and that word saved, saved from condemnation, saved from judgment, saved from my sins. And there was one simple step that Paul gives to this guard. You know what it was? He didn't say, hey, you need to go get circumcised. You need to obey these kind of things. You know, he says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And the Bible says that the guard believed. He was baptized and he washed their wounds. And uh, you ever wonder who discipled them after they left? Because listen, you think about it, they were who was there? Who was there to help them? Well, I'll tell you what, it was the Holy Spirit who would stay with them and would mentor and disciple them. And there are, obviously we are called to disciple, make disciples, but there are times in which we underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit. When we are converted, the Spirit comes to live on the inside of him, us, and he does an incredible job of training us, teaching us, mentoring us into the faith. All of this demonstrates the power of the gospel and the potential we have to influence people for Jesus Christ.